Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2 is often credited as one of the best comic book movies of all time and also one of the greatest sequels of all time. Well, is it true? Yeah, pretty much. But stick around for the review. on everybody welcome back to another video and as i just said we're going to be talking about sam raimi's second installment into his spider-man trilogy simply titled spider-man 2 and i'm incredibly excited to be continuing this series with my friend dempsey from his channel palat productions a huge thanks to him for being here in both of these videos now but a big thanks to him for being in this video you guys can find the link to his channel down below in the description box go give him some love and let him know i sent you but for now we're going to be talking about spider-man 2 the second installment into the sam raimi trilogy of spider-man films a film like i mentioned at the intro uh, that is usually credited for being one of the greatest comic book movies of all time and one of the greatest sequels of all time and i have to agree with the way that this film is praised this is an incredibly great spider-man film that brings in so many great elements from the comic books expands upon the narrative set up in the first one gives these characters so much more time to really breathe all these actors feel like they really get a lot more comfortable in these roles and overall it's just a fun exciting action adventure film that has so many little great moments between character has the big action that you expect from a film like this and really would set the groundwork for where we are today in comic book movie history so in this movie we get to see peter parker balancing that life between being a normal guy just being the dweeby peter parker that we know and being spider-man we see that he's struggling a bit with that you know that balance between being a normal guy and trying to you know work a job and go to school and do normal things and being a guy who has these incredible abilities and feels the need to save people and at the end of the day really wants to save people but that imbalance starts to kind of get to him and not long into the film he starts to lose his powers he feels a disconnect from that part of himself that spider-man and he lets go of that side of himself he decides to be a normal person for majority of the film and this is about him finding who he truly is realizing that spider-man isn't just a persona that is part of him when he puts on the costume but at the end of the day he's been given these powers for a reason and he is spider-man he is not just peter parker he is both he's peter parker and he's spider-man but he doesn't have to live them separately you know he can find that balance he can find who he is in spider-man as well as finding who he is in just peter parker and i really enjoy the journey that peter parker goes on in this film i think toby mcguire does a great job i've always said he is my favorite peter parker without a doubt you know i think i really enjoy tom holland's uh spider-man and even some of andrew garfield's spider-man as far as him in the actual suit and the the quippiness and the silliness and kind of feeling a little bit more in line with the comic book version of spider-man but as far as a really great consistent peter parker and spider-man i think toby mcguire kills it and he is without a doubt my favorite peter parker i think he just captures the essence of that character that was set up in the comic books if you go back and watch the late 60s early 70s animated show if you uh watch any really of the animated spider-man shows from before the 2000s or even leading up to the early 2000s without a doubt he's the best interpretation of the character of peter parker in live action just being able to balance that likable charming dweeby guy whereas i feel like andrew garfield and Tom Holland, though they have those elements, they're way too cool. They're way too good looking, nice guy that isn't really the dweeb that you kind of need from Peter Parker. You need him to be that geeky kind of charming guy. And I think that Tobey Maguire nails that perfectly. And being able to see him grow into a different character in this film and grow just as a character while still being that dweeby guy is something I think Tobey Maguire does really well. And also you have to praise the writing team, Sam Raimi for the way he directed this film. And yeah, overall, I just really enjoy the characterization of all these characters characters in this film and the way it's all really handled oh we have alfred molina showing up in this film as dr octopus which was great i think he's phenomenal in this film as doc ock i really enjoy his interpretation and he literally looks like the character i think he is the perfect casting because if you go back and look at any doc ock artwork or animated stuff from before the time this movie came out alfred molina fits the look of the character that was established and i think that 
really Sam Raimi did an incredible job of casting people in this entire trilogy. I would say my least favorite casting choice of this entire trilogy is probably Kirsten Dunst as Mary Jane. Don't get me wrong, I like her in the role. I've always been a fan of Kirsten Dunst in a lot of different things, but she's definitely not what I always envisioned Mary Jane would be. I don't feel like we've gotten a Mary Jane that I've ever truly envisioned from the comics in live action personally, uh, but you know, she does a good job in this film and her relationship and what's going on between her and Peter in this film, I think is really solid. I really enjoy watching it. It's definitely something that grips me while I'm watching the movie. Um, then on top of that, you have Harry Osborn in the mix, played by James Franco, who is great. And, uh, you know, really seeing his character change so much after his father died in the first one. And, and you know, that, that revenge and anger towards Spider-Man that's building up in him. I think James Franco does a great job with that in this film. And I thoroughly enjoy his performance across the entirety of the film. And I think that this movie does a really good job of balancing all of these characters. Because you do have a lot of characters that share a lot of screen time or have their own screen time. And I think that the movie does a good job of allowing you to spend time with all of these characters in a fun and whimsical and exciting way that has drama that brings weight to the narrative and is also just entertaining to watch on every level. Now that I've given my general thoughts on the movie, let's go ahead and hear what Dempsey had to say about this and then we'll get back to the rest of my thoughts. Hey guys, Dempsey from Palau Productions here and uh, once again I just want to extend a special thank you to Anthony Perez for letting me collab with him once again. Uh, if you guys don't know, we've collabed previously a couple of times. Uh, once was for the first film in the Spider-Man franchise, so you can only imagine how excited I am to be talking with you guys today with him about Spider-Man 2. Directed by Sam Raimi, this film once again stars Tobey Maguire as Peter Parker, aka Spider-Man, but follows him as he continues to balance the stress and responsibility of being the city's only hero. This, as a new threat appears in the form of Dr. Octopus. Now, I don't know why, but every time I say the full name, I just want to laugh. Dr. Octopus. I mean, it is a silly name, okay? We have to admit that. But then again, that that's kind of what Marvel's always done. And if we're being honest here, they've done a lot worse. Now, getting back on track, this film features both the return of Kirsten Dunst and James Franco as Mary Jane Watson and Harry Osborn, respectively. But it also adds Alfred Molina as Doc Ock, which is what I'll be referring to him as for the remainder of the video for obvious reasons. Uh, now, as some of you guys might recall in my last collaboration with Anthony for the first Spider-Man film, I went into great detail as to why I thought that was one of the best superhero films of all time. But I only did that because, as many of you guys know, this film is constantly regarded not only as one of the best superhero films of all time, but as one of the best sequels of all time, too. And it is! I mean, I'm not going to be refuting that in this video, let me be clear. This is a masterful sequel on almost every level. Just when you think it can't get any better after part one, it does. The acting, the action, the villain, the stakes, everything is just so good. One of my favorite things about this film and one of the things that make it a true standout to me is easily the fact that for nearly half of it, Peter doesn't have his powers. Yes, he willingly hangs up his cape, so to speak, but he also has to learn what it means to be a hero here. And in the process, he learns that there's actually a lot more to being a hero than just having superpowers. Now, this is going to sound corny as hell, but I found it really interesting how in the first film, we witness Peter as he learns to become more of a spider, whereas in this one, we see him learn how to become more of a man. Right? No? Yeah, I'll see myself out. In all seriousness, though, I really like the idea of Peter uh, coming to terms with his mortality as a superhero and truly learning of what he's capable of as a man in general. You know, the fact that he can't be everywhere all at once, uh, that even though he has all these superpowers, he can't save everyone all the time. I really like that idea, and I love that it isn't until he realizes all that that his powers come back, and they come back stronger than ever, too. Aside from the great continuation of Peter's arc from the first film though, I've gotta say that the character development across the board here is pretty good. Everyone seems so much more comfortable in their roles here, and even as a newcomer, Alfred Molina fits perfectly into this world, and kills it, literally. And shout out to Sam Raimi for utilizing his background in horror to create that truly terrifying sequence where Doc Ock is born. That is just unforgettable. I mean, his direction in general is just great once again. Uh, 
not only does he continue to capture that signature comic book look and feel from the first film, but he expounds upon it. And I think I mentioned this earlier, but he just really expounds upon everything. Um, and I don't want to say that everything's better, necessarily, because I do believe that both this film and the first film are great for totally different reasons. But uh, he definitely ups the ante. Uh, especially in terms of action, and I find it so fascinating while this film is so uh, so much smaller uh, in, in terms of, you know, Peter's dealing with a lot of uh, personal demons, um, uh, I guess emotionally, uh, that to contrast that, you have these massive action set pieces. There are so many really great action scenes here. And obviously you can't talk about action in this film without bringing up that iconic train sequence. If there's any moment comparable to that one scene on the bridge at the end of the first Spider-Man that really captures the spirit and essence of New York and what it's like to be a New Yorker, it's the train sequence here. And not just because <laughs> literally all these people actually look like real New Yorkers, but because of how they act in the face of danger uh, and fear. Literally, they're all on the brink of death, and this one guy's just like, Any more bright ideas? <laughs> While most people adore the sequence for the action and the special effects, which honestly don't hold up too well now, I happen to think that it would be nothing without the people. As we all know, in superhero films, people are mostly collateral damage. But what I like about these films, and this film in particular, is that Raimi constantly reminds the audience that people are important. Because without anybody to save, heroes wouldn't exist. Now, in case you couldn't tell, I think this film is yet another perfect entry in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man trilogy. And for that, I'm going to give this film five stars. Shazam! Once again, I want to thank Anthony so much for inviting me to collab again. Dude, it is always a pleasure, and uh, I know it's been a minute since our last one, but I'm hoping maybe we could finish out the trilogy together. What do you think? A big thanks to Dempsey for being here in this video. Loved hearing your thoughts, man. I love your passion for both Spider-Man and Spider-Man 2, and I love what you bring to these reviews, quite frankly. I really am looking forward to having you in Spider-Man 3. I was definitely going to ask you the second I uploaded this, so uh, I don't know if I'll have asked you by the time this video is up or whatever the case may be, but Dempsey, I would be honored to have you in my review for Spider-Man 3, and I think based on your response about Spider-Man 3 in the end of your clip there, we may have differing opinions slightly on Spider-Man 3, but as far as Spider-Man 2 goes, I think that this is a really great film like you mentioned. I have to agree with pretty much everything that you said. Uh, one thing I was going to mention, but I definitely wanted to wait till you said it and then I could say my piece is that yeah there are a couple moments where some of the cg is not as not as top notch as it may have felt back then but i would argue that for the most part this film still looks really good as far as the cgi effects there's a couple moments that definitely have that early 2000s cheesy kind of vibe to some of the cg and it kind of makes sense this is a big movie with a lot of ambitious special effects at times but i do think it balances it really well and it does really still look good to me i really enjoy a lot of those elements and i have to agree that sam raimi did such a great job of using his horror background to really um, make that scene where Doc Ock is becoming Doc Ock, the birth of Doc Ock, uh, so powerful, so creepy, so eerie, while still making it just entertaining to watch. You know, it doesn't necessarily leave that comic book realm, but there's definitely a nice little droplet of horror in that moment that I think, again, just really showcases uh, his talents in that genre. So that also has me really excited to see what Sam Raimi does with uh, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, which is apparently going to be a little bit on the horror edge as he's directing that film. So overall, I love this film. It seems like you love this film too i think the performances are strong i think the special effects are strong give or take a couple moments i think the overall character arcs across this film and everything that happens with uh doc ock and spider-man and spider-man's journey peter's journey in this film i think it's just all done really well there's tons of quotable lines the music the score is done so so well and i think that again this film similar to the first one honors the legacy of spider-man it takes a few liberties and does its own thing which i think any adaptation really should 
Uh, but I think that it does a really great job of honoring these characters, their legacy, the story that was already established, and taking that and adapting it in a new and fun way that still honors that original story telling of this character and his story and the various things that he's gone through across the comic books, animated shows, or various other interpretations of Spider-Man. I think that Sam Raimi understood and understands Spider-Man in comic books very, very well. And both the first one and this one, I think, are two of the greatest comic book movies of all time still today. I think when I look back at the two of them, there's positives and negatives to both. I think I can totally understand if people really think that this is the best one in the trilogy. I think I'm kind of partial to the first one. I, there's something about that one that I love so so much. I love the first Spider-Man movie. Uh, really, really just love that movie. I think that it's the perfect Spider-Man movie in so many ways. Uh, but I think the second one is a beautiful follow-up. It's the Empire Strikes Back of Spider-Man films, in my opinion. Thoroughly enjoy this film. Thoroughly enjoy the adventure. Thoroughly enjoy the characters. Thoroughly enjoy the action. And I very much was very happy to have my buddy Dempsey here in this video to say pretty much the same thing. So I loved having you here in the video, Dempsey. Thank you so much. I look forward to our review for Spider-Man 3. Everybody else, please leave your comments down below. Hit that like button, subscribe for more videos. If you're new to the channel, I probably should have said this at the beginning, but my name is Anthony A. Perez and I got tons of great stuff here on the channel. We talk about movies, TV, Star Wars, various other things, Disney vlogs and all that great stuff. So if you're interested, please click that subscribe button and you guys can find the link to my guest down below in the description box. Go check out his channel, Palat Production, where he has tons of great reviews on movies, TV series, as well as a really, really great thing where he's doing lately where he is reviewing a movie. Sometimes they're smaller films, sometimes they're bigger films. And he's also being able to interview whether it's the director, producer, some of the cast of these movies. And he's an incredible interviewer. I highly recommend going to check out his video series over on his channel. He's got tons of stuff going on over there. And uh, I hope you guys do that. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. So I'm gonna go now. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have never seen the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies, I could not recommend these movies more. The first and second one are some of the strongest comic book films of all time, and you can see how they laid the groundwork for where we are today in comic book movies. And I will say right now, I am quite actually the fan of Spider-Man 3. I don't hate it nearly as much as a lot of people, and I am looking forward to talking about that one. But I can also admit right here that it is the weaker of the three films. But Spider-Man 3, we'll talk about that in another video. Again, my guest link down below in the description box. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.